eight. Hello, hello. Ah, there we go. Good evening. How's everybody this evening? Did you get some sleep after church? Amen. I pray you had a great time in church this morning. My name is Pastor Michael Amy. I want to welcome you to Koi. Amen. Tonight is a very special night. Uh, we are having a live recording tonight for Pride and Sounds of Worship. Excited to be a part of this. Excited to sow into this young man's life. His parents are here, and you'll meet them later. Um, make some noise for Pride. Just let them know you're here to support them and love on them. Amen. And so I just want to open up in prayer, and then we're going to go right into worship, and then we're going to have a time of word, and then we're going to go uh, back into worship with pride. And it's going to be a great, great night. Turn to your neighbor say, neighbor, don't go to sleep. Neighbor, sing like you've never sang before. See, we, we did it two ways. We did it proper, sing, and then we did it blackish, sang. Sang like you've never sang before. Amen. Father God, we just thank you. We praise you for tonight, Lord. We cover this night and we surrender to you. We yield to you. Be glorified. Be magnified tonight, Lord. I thank you, Lord, that as we worship, lives will change. Destinies will be rewritten for you, Lord. I thank you, Lord, that people will even be healed as we worship tonight. Delivered and set free. Satan, you're defeated. You are bound. You are broken. In the name of Jesus. This sound would, what will work perfectly tonight. No issues in the recording. No issues in anything at all. Lord, we give you all the glory, all the praise, all the adoration and thanksgiving. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Hallelujah. Is anybody excited to be in the house of God tonight? That's your excitement? Yikes. Is there anybody excited to be in the house of God tonight? Well, I don't know about you, but I can't stay seated when I'm worshiping. So I'm going to ask all of you to stand on your feet to help us, to worship with us. Don't let us lead you. Lead us. Let's lead together. Amen? Oh, come on. That means you got to clap your hands. You got to open your mouth. You got to move your body. You got to have a wonderful and awesome time. If you know who you are in Christ Jesus, let me hear you say, I know who I am. I know who I am. I heard maybe two of you. If you know who you are in Christ Jesus, let me hear you say, I know who I am. I know who I am. Hallelujah. Is that? Uh, we are. We are a chosen generation. Called for. Called for to show his excellence. And all I require. All I require for life. God has given me. And I know. I yeah. know who Come on, I say it again. We are a chosen generation. We are a chosen generation. Called for. Called for to show his excellence. And all I require. All I require for life. God has given me. And I know. Come on, if you know. Say, I know who God says I am. Hey, what He says I am. Where He says I'm at. Cause I know who I am. I know who God says I am. Come on, I can't hear you. Where He says I'm at. Cause I know who. Come on, let's take it from the top. We are. We are a chosen generation. We're called for, called for to show His excellence. And all I require, all I require for life, God is given and me. I, know. I know. Come on, say it again. We are a chosen. We are a chosen generation. Yes, we are. Call for to show His excellence. And all I require, all I require for life, God is given me. I Come on, if you know who you are, I say. Am. I know who God says I am. What He says I am. Where He says I'm at. Cause I know. Say, I know who God says I am. Yeah, yeah. Where He says I'm at. Cause I know who I am. Oh, oh, oh. Somebody say, I am. 
I am holy. Say I am. I am righteous. I am. Cause I know I'm working, working. I'm working in miracles. I live a life of favor. Cause I know I'm working, working. I'm working in miracles. I live a life of favor. Come on, I need y'all to walk with me. I'm working. Come on, let's go. I'm working in miracles. I live a life of favor. Cause I know I'm working, working. Working in miracles, I live a life of favor, cause I know who See, I am. Oh, 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 oh. Oh, 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 oh. Sing, oh, oh, oh. I know. Sing, oh, 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 oh. Oh, 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 oh. oh. I know Somebody who shout I for Jesus in this place. Hey, 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 Worship you in spirit and in truth, God. You're worthy. Somebody say, I'm working. I'm working in power. I'm working in miracles. I live a life of favor. Yeah. I'm working, I'm working. I'm working in miracles. I live a life of favor. I'm working, I'm working. I'm working in miracles. I live a life of favor. I know who I'm, I'm working, working, working. working. I'm working in miracles. I live a life of favor. Come on, band, you play. Come on. Somebody in here who's not afraid. Somebody dance for Jesus in this place. Hey, hey. We're going to break it down real quick, yeah? See, people want to judge us now on who we used to be. <laughs> but see, what they don't know, what y'all doing? Y'all all right? We good? All right. But what they don't know is I'm not who I used to be. I am who God says I am. He says I'm holy, I'm righteous, I'm favored, I'm blessed, I'm above only and never beneath. I'm the head and not the tail. I'm the lender and not the borrower. So I don't care who you think you used to know, but take a look at me, I'm a wonder. It doesn't matter what you see now, when you see his glory. Cause I somebody know. tell somebody. Take a look at me, I'm a wonder. It doesn't matter what you see now, when you see his glory. Cause I know. Take a look at me. Take a look at me, I'm a wonder. I'm a wonder. Doesn't matter what you see. It doesn't matter. You see his glory. Hey, take a look. Take a look at me, I'm a wonder. Doesn't matter what you see now. When you Turn see to somebody glory. and look them right in their face and say, take a look. Come on. Take a look at me, I'm a wonder. It doesn't matter what you see now. When you see his glory. Turn to somebody else and say, take a look. Take a look at me, I'm a wonder. I'm a wonder. Doesn't matter what you see. Doesn't matter. See his glory. Turn to one more person who's not sure and say, take a look at me, I'm a wonder. It doesn't matter what you see now. See his glory. Okay, one more time. Take a look at me, I'm a wonder. It doesn't matter what you see now, when you see his glory. See, oh, 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 I know who see, I am. Oh, 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 I know. Oh, I know who I am. Oh, 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 o
know who I am. Come on, if you know who you are, give the Lord some crazy, unhindered, unchecked praise. Because he's truly worthy. He's truly worthy. This next song is a song that we wrote in house and it just says, I'm becoming who you called me to be. I'm forgetting the past that's behind me. We're called to be light of the world. That's who we are. So tonight, whether you know the words or not, just worship. Can we do that? This first part simply says, dig down deep in my heart and draw from the well that's within, within me. You fill my heart with your love and the rivers of life that are flowing out of me. Can we do that together? Dig down deep in my soul and draw from the well that's within me. Fill my heart with your love and the rivers of life flowing out of me. Can we declare that tonight? We give him permission to dig. Dig down deep in my soul and draw from the well. And draw from the well that's within me. And feel my heart. Yeah. Feel my heart with your love. And the river. And the rivers of life flowing out of me. Come on, only sing it if you mean it. Say, dig down deep. Dig down deep in my soul. And draw from. And draw from the well that's within me. And fill my heart. Yeah. Fill my heart with your love. And the rivers of life flowing out of me. Come on, let's ask him to consume us tonight. Consume me. Consume me, Father. Consume me, Father. The living waters in me. Consume me, Father. Consume me, Father. Consume me, Father. Back to the top. Come on, let's say dig down. Dig down deep in my soul. And draw from. And draw from the well that's within me. We ask you to fill us up, oh God, say. Fill my heart with your love. Fill my heart and the rivers of life flowing out of me. Consume me, consume me, consume me. Consume me, Father. Consume me, Father. Consume me, Father. Your living waters in me. Consume me, oh God. Consume me, Father. Consume me, Father. Your living waters. Cause in me springs life in abundance, life overcoming your living waters in me. Cause in me springs life, in yeah. me springs life in abundance, overcome life overcoming your living waters in me. Consume me, consume me, Father. Consume, consume me, Father. Your, your living water is in me. Consume me, Lord. Consume me, Father. Consume me, Father. Your living water. Consume me, 
Father, consume me, Father, your living waters in me. Come on, for the last time, tell him, consume me. Consume me, Father, consume me, Father, your living waters in me. We set the stage for you, Holy Spirit. We don't want to do anything independent of you. We completely and totally rely on you. We just say thank you. Thank you for making a way for us. We thank you, Lord God. Thank you, Jesus. Is there anybody who he's made a way for? Is there anybody in here who he's moved mountains for? So we're going to sing this last song and we're going to give it all we got. Because we're going to identify where we were, what we were doing when he made a way. And for some of you, you're going to be singing by faith because you need him to make a way. But he's done everything he's already going to do. It's just a matter of time before we see the manifestation of what he's already done. Amen. Hallelujah. You made a way. Don't know how, but you did it. You made a way. Yeah. Backs 
When our backs were against the wall And it looked, and it looked as if it was over You, you and only made a way And we're standing here And we're standing here Only because you made a way Somebody needs to shout right there Because you know that the only reason why you're standing here is because he made a way. And you move mountains and you cause the walls to fall with your power. Perform miracles. There is nothing. That's impossible And we're standing here Only because you You move You move mountains You cause the walls You cause walls to fall yeah. With your power Your power, Lord Perform miracles And there is there nothing, is nothing. There's nothing, there's nothing That's impossible And we're standing And we're standing here Only because you made You move You move mountains You cause walls to fall Only because you love Perform, you perform Perform miracles There is nothing there is Nothing at all That's impossible And we're standing And we're standing here Only because Only because you made And we're standing away. here And we're standing here Only because Only because you made And we're standing away. here And we're standing here Only because you made a way You made a way Come on, let's just keep singing that right there You made You made a way Over and over and over and over and over You made a way You made a way you Made a way. Come on, let's let's declare that tonight. You made you made a way. You made a way out of no way. You made a way. With hands lifted all over this place, say, You yeah. made a way. You made a way for me. You made a way. Come on, you made. You made a way. You made. You made a way. Over and over. Come on, you tell them tonight. You. Come on, you can do better than that. serve an amazing God. Over and over and over again, He shows up. People can fail us, but God never will. He's the same yesterday, same today, the same forever, always making a way. Amen. 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 Hey, we're going to get into the Word right now, and we have an amazing speaker here with us on tonight 
Dr. Patricia Bailey. She, uh, it's really her fault that I'm in missions as well, you know. She has a part to play in that, but I went on my very first missions trip at the age of 14 with her and about 80 other teenagers. And uh, I've been doing missions ever since and ministry ever since. And so she's here tonight. She's going to bless us with the word tonight. Uh, this makes her 142nd country doing ministry. That's an awesome thing. Amen. And so I just want you to help me celebrate her as she comes up to deliver the word. I want you to lean in tonight, listen, open your ears. I pray and I know you will be blessed. Amen. Testing. Am I on? Can we give the Lord praise? Amen. Come on, let's praise him like we really, really, really love him. Let's praise him like we're from Namibia and we love him. <laughs> you may be seated. And while you're being seated, I need you to help me on your way down to your seat. Give Pastor Michael and his lovely wife, accompanying him in ministry, a great big God bless you. We appreciate you. Thank you. I'm not going to be before you long because I know many of us are ready for the concert. But what I want to do is share with you some things. Uh, I will be 60 years old in about a year and a half, a little less than a year and a half. And I didn't have Kareem when I was three, so he's the evidence that I'm almost 60 because he's 37, okay? But what I've learned in almost 60 years of life in 142 countries is this. I was mentored by some of the greatest generals of our time that have gone on to be with the Lord. Men like the late T.L. Osborne, the late Dr. Miles Monroe, the late Dr. Archbishop Bensonita Hosa, there's a whole plethora of them who are generals of our time. And I was closely mentored, like taken up under my wings by them. One of the things that I learned from the late Dr. Miles Monroe, who we were literally serving in leadership together, working in South Africa, we left South Africa, he flew on to work in, uh, I think, Swaziland, and then on to Burundi, and I left South Africa to go on to work in South Sudan. The, it was right after the end of the war, the last war. And last maybe three years, maybe even four, he would put a heavy emphasis and he called me to the side and said, these areas here in leadership and in life, what did I say in leadership and in, are the areas that people always overlook the most. And they seemingly to be the type of areas that it doesn't matter whether you give attention to it or not, so this is what I'm going to ask you to do tonight because I know there's quite a bit of activity as they're getting things ready for the concert and people coming in. I need you to make a self-declaration to yourself so that your mind will understand that if nobody else gets these three principles tonight, you're going to get it. So I need you to shout it loud tonight. I'm going to get it. Turn to your neighbor and shout it even loud and says, I'm going to get it. Okay. The reason why I listened to the late Dr. Miles Monroe, because in the top sellers from New York's sellers, bestsellers list, to Putman in the largest publishing houses in the world, he was always not only number one, but he was an extremely successful, wealthy man, but a very humble man. And his assignment in life was to mostly minister to dignitaries, heads of states. I mean, from every end of the spectrum, from Israel to the Arab nations, and not only would they listen, but God had given them a grace to take the principles of the Word of God and communicate them even in secular arenas. On this year and last year, I was privileged to speak at the UN and was blessed to speak over the UN to the General Council and declare at the UN and before the General Council that Jesus is Lord over the nations. Can someone say amen? 
We shared one of those principles for those of you that were here on Thursday night, and that principle was the principle of management. And because of the sake of time, I always put those two together, and that would be management and stewardship. So in business and in life, people who are very ambitious, they think of things like be, uh, perseverance would be the most important thing, aggressive would be the most important thing, competitive would be the most important thing. Uh, let me think of some of the different things when you read all these different things on leadership or how to become successful in life, they give you different things, you know, perseverance, don't give up, don't quit, uh, just all these different things. And he says, and these are the ones that everybody seems to overlook, but in the eyes of God, they are not only the most important, they're the ones he gave us coming out of the gate. Winning principles. Somebody shout winning principles. Winning. Sounded like you really want to believe this and you want to apply it to your life. Winning principles. Winning principles. And once Dr. Miles Monroe taught me this, I began to see, I made a decision to put on those type of lens in my life and to look at life through those lens. And though others may not pay attention to it, pay attention to it because he had proven his pudding. He was a very very successful man and so he had evidence so one of the ones that we were sharing on Thursday night and you all seem to have been really blessed were you blessed on Thursday night yeah. for those who were not here on Thursday night let them know that you were really blessed <laughs> and in Genesis the second chapter and the fifth verse for this is a very brief over because I got 40 minutes I got to hit like 10 minutes on each one to be done Genesis 2 verse 5 God says this coming out of the gate interesting well, as a matter of fact, before we get to Genesis 2-5, he does Genesis 1-26. I'm going to tie the two together, okay? Make a stew out of it. Genesis 1-26-28, he says this. I created you in my image and in my likeness. And God makes sure coming out of the gate that your gender is not determined your identity. Your ethnicity does not determine your identity. Your income does not determine your identity. Your failures, your parents, your parents, your culture, your tradition, nothing that starts on the planet determines your identity. Nothing on this side of your mother's womb determines your identity. Your identity was established before time began. So if you're waiting on this side of the womb to determine who I am, what I'm supposed to do, career plans, whatever, you're already too late in the game. He established who you are not based upon anything on the planet. Your reference point is him. Your reference point for identity is him. Not what's the latest fad, not what's acceptable, not what society says. Your identity point is him. Shout it. My identity point is him. Say it like you mean it. My identity point is him. Let's say it this way. My reference point is to him. So he says he's the vine, you're the branches, and in of yourself you can do nothing without him. You didn't think of you. You didn't create you. You didn't choose you. You didn't make you. He said, I made you. So you never have to make yourself successful because he already made you. Someone shout and give God some praise for that. It gets even better. You didn't look for me. You didn't search for me. I sought for you. I was not satisfied. I could not... I just had to have you. I just wanted you. And then after he reveals to us who we are and that we are who we are by the grace of God and that's all we ever have to be. So can I just share this with you? Draw a circle in your life. And from this night, stop making other people's opinion about you your reality. Your reality is not their opinions. Everybody has an opinion. Just don't make what they say about you be true. Be true to who he says that you are. And you're going to always lean towards your most dominant thought. So your most dominant thought about you should never be the reference of what somebody thinks or their opinion. So this is how I do in life. And to be honest, I first heard this from Oprah Winfrey who got it from Maya Angelou who literally lived two blocks from our building, lived in my hometown. Maya Angelou said, Oprah, draw yourself a circle. Now, everybody that has an opinion about you, this is my version of it. 
bark, 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 like a chicken. Does the eagle ever consult with the chicken about how high he can fly? Does the eagle ever try to convince the chicken how wide his wingspan is? The eagle never even hears the because the eagle has not allowed the chicken in its circle. The eagle just soars. It's living a life of purpose. She said, draw yourself a circle. And everything people have to say about you and think about you, that may be their reality about you, but it don't have to be yours. You don't allow that in your circle. Now, it's not until you step outside of your circle and start listening to but you have the right to determine what you allow in your circle. Somebody say, I'm drawing myself a new circle tonight. And some of you have allowed people in your circle to guess what you need to do tonight. You need to pull out your phone, delete, 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 look, delete, 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 out of my circle, delete. Because everybody's not called to your next chapter. You need to tweet that. And you can even say you came up with it. Our challenge in life is not who we are. Our challenge is who we think we are not. You already are who you are by the grace of God. You already his workmanship created in Christ Jesus. Everything that's ever happened to me in life, it didn't happen based upon the opinions of men. It happened based on me hearing, having my ear to the heart of the Father. It's allowed me to work on the ISIS border and come out safe. It's allowed me to work in Al-Qaeda regions and come out safe. It's allowed me to work amongst Al-Shabaab. We just left the Somali border a couple of months ago and come out safe because my confidence is not based on Al-Shabaab because El Shaddai came from before Al-Shabaab, amen? My confidence is in the one who is my reference point, the one who's daily my reference point, the one who daily that knows my thoughts from afar. So he establishes your identity, and because God's so wise, he wants to make sure that you know your identity before he gives you your purpose. Pastor Mike has been teaching on purpose, because if you tried to run out in life, and fulfill your purpose. That's what some of your problems are. You don't need to lay on nobody's couch. You don't need to see a psychiatrist or a counselor. You just need to go to the Bible, go back to the seed plot book of the Bible, and see that your purpose is only gonna be fulfilled when you're connected with who you are in Him. And what He does is He gives you a boost and a catapult in life, that as long as you're connecting your purpose with your identity, you shall never fail. Someone shout amen. amen. But if you try to go out there and do you and be successful and have a career and leave your identity in him out, you're a failure on a time clock. 10, 9, 8, 7. Because he is divine. Now this is the scary thing about God. He will sit back and go and let you just do you. You know how that hamster on it? I don't know if y'all do it here in America. We have a hamster, you know, the little gerbil, a hamster. And he's just going, and he got a lot of activity. And wear himself out. But is he going anywhere? And that's just like most of us. You have a lot of activity, but your life has not moved forward to the potential of what it could be. Please, don't take your best you to the grave. Now I told you I'm almost 60, right? So the greater portion of my life has now been lived. The majority of me has been seen, but the best of me has not been seen. You hearing me? Today is the first day of the rest of this year, the next six months. What are you gonna do with it? If you keep doing what you've been doing, you're gonna keep getting what you've been getting. And the definition of insanity is doing the same thing and expecting a different result. I call that stupid. Brooklyn, stupid. So God says, in order to be successful, let me give you these principles. Know who you are in me, 
then I reveal to you my purpose. Once you know who you are, look at what I've ordained you to do. Have dominion in all the earth. That means whatever sphere that you're operating in, you run it, you own it, you dominate it. You don't come to take sides, you come to take over. When you come on the scene, you dominate it. You, that, that's not being arrogant. God says you dominate it so that when you show up, you're not seen, he's seen. Because if he be lifted up, are you with me? So we were never to be substandard and inferior in any game in life. If you're in business, if you're in school, if you're married, whatever it is you're facing in life that, you're, that, that you call the essence of life, you're not the tail, you're the head. You're not beneath, you're above. The greater one lives on the inside of you. He not only called you to dominate, but he said then increase. Then he didn't just stop with increase, he said multiply. That means if you have a business, you're not supposed to have that business doing hair in your kitchen. You're supposed to have a chain and a franchise of them. That means whatever it is that you do, if you bake cakes, if you write books, if you write songs, if you're on television, whatever business you have, you have inside of you multi-layers of being able to increase and multiply. Now, whether you tap into those layers and multiply here, but, but I tried that before and I failed in business and we tried to franchise and we failed. So did McDonald's. And now they're all over the world. Say amen, somebody. Amen. So increase and multiply is not contingent upon you. He already put it inside of you. Can I prove it to you? The Bible says, when he made man, when he made you. Where's my mic? That's better when I do it this way. Mike, where's your mic? That's Yolanda's mic. They got too many mics on me because we're, we're airing for television. So look good, women that are not married, because your bae may be watching, okay? I got all the women's attention now, Mimi. When he did this, <laughs> found the right mic. He breathed into you the breath of, uh-uh, y'all gonna say life. Mm -mm. His life. So everything that makes him who he is, increase multiply does god increase does god multiply that means the makeup of god is never just one dimensional he's a transgenerational god a multi-generational god and he made you in his image so you think that you've maxed out and you think this is the best you and you think that this is all you can do and you think that you're absolutely on top and you think that this is all i can take on oh my god baby you ain't even entered the game yet you just own dimension number one you've not hit two three or four then he says the word is broken down to restock, to replenish, means to keep your business or whatever product you have. Like if you got a song out and it's number one, have eight already ready. Are you hearing me? Have stuff restock. Come on, come on, ready. I'm ready already. I, got, I just got stuff in store. I'm ready to come out with the next, the next, the next, the next. That's inside of you. God now, once he reveals that, he says now Genesis 2 verse 5. Genesis 2 verse 5 says this. He says... I will hold back the rain and I hold back the rain because there was no man to till the ground wait a minute God if this indeed is a principle what are you saying to us he said that rain could not be released in the earth and he also says in one translation I will hold back growth in your life he says, I will hold back growth because there was no man to manage the growth. So what is it in your life that you can't seem to move forward? You can't seem to get a breakthrough. You can't seem to get a manifestation. He said, stop asking me to give you what you want and start coming to me to teach you how to manage. He will not give you what you want. He will give you what you can manage. So he says there was no man to manage the growth. So think about how wise that is. If there was no man to till the field and manage the growth, think about earth right now if man was taken off the planet. The whole world would just be chaos and out of order. So God says, and what word is in the word management? Man. So God says, I, as you manage, you get increased. As you, whatever areas of your life, unsupervised, unmanaged, 
every unmanaged area of your life, give attention to it because you're not waiting on God. God is waiting on you. He says, I will not release growth until I see management in certain areas. Let me prove it to you in the scriptures. On the mountain, the Sermon on the Mount, the little boy that had the two-piece fish dinner, you know the story. And so the little boy managed his resources. He put it into the hands of the master. Then what did the master do? The master, before he started distributing, what is the first thing Jesus did? Separate the men and the women, separate the men. He was developing order. He was managing the increase that was about to take place. He did not multiply first. He did not allow increase first. He waited until there was a management plan. Many of you right now, you're experiencing challenges with your finances, challenges in different areas of your life, challenges with your health. If you don't manage your health, God will hold back healing. If you don't manage time, God will hold back increase. If you don't manage relationship, God will hold back. Are you hearing me? Some of you women that are waiting for a husband, you're not waiting on God. God's waiting on you to manage yourself and get yourself together so you're not a headache to somebody else. <laughs> Say, we love you, Auntie Pat. Here's another one. Sheba, who was already wealthy, she took a caravan across the desert with extreme wealth. It wasn't that Solomon was poor. I got my eyes on the clock. It wasn't that Solomon was poor. Solomon already had money. But after Solomon, pay attention, followed every explicit order, management, instruction of God to the, every ounce of specificity, and when God put his stamp of approval that you followed every specific order, you managed the project I gave you right. You managed the project I gave you right. All of heaven watches your life to see how you manage your life. And most of you, you're letting somebody else manage your life. If you go with the story of the prodigal son, it's about management. I'll prove it to you. I'm not going to leave you in the desert with sheep. I'm going to come back and get you, okay? There are two sons. We forget when we read the Bible, Mike, they both were given their inheritance. Both of them were, not just one. In my opinion, they both mismanaged their inheritance. Can I prove it? The one squandered his off with wasteful living, and you know, riotous living, okay? And he realized, I'm not, I'm not managing my life right. He came back, he repented, and his father received him. The other dude was jealous because the father celebrated that the brother came back. At least the, uh, the first brother who went out and spent his and riotous living, he was lost outside the house. The brother that was in the house that had access to all the wealth and all the money to take nothing in the scripture says while he was in the house, he took his inheritance and invested it and did anything because he was still in his daddy's house. So neither one of them managed their potential. I don't, I don't know if they got that. You're going to probably get that tomorrow. Mike, did you get it? It was all about mismanagement. What about the five foolish versions and the wide versions? The foolish ones mismanage their resources. So now they want to go take the resources when it was time for the bridegroom to come from the women that manage their time, manage their resources, and prioritize their life. Mismanagement. What about the parable in Luke 21st chapter with the wicked vine dresser when the manager went on a far journey and left somebody over his vineyard and then sent a servant back to get a, a report, a status report, a product report of how the vine dresser was managing, managing, managing his vineyard. The man not only mismanaged the vineyard, he mismanaged trust. Because when the servant came to get a report to take back to the master, the vine dresser, the wicked vine dresser beat up the servant. The servant comes back with a black eye hopping, are you hearing me, on one leg and says they beat him in the owner of the vineyard. Look at me and saying, what in the world? Doesn't he know that's my vineyard? So he mismanaged trust to the point that he thought it was his vineyard now. The second servant came, they beat him as well. Mismanagement, somebody shout mismanagement. mismanagement. He mismanaged trust, he mismanaged relationships. Some of us are not where we're supposed to be in life because we've mismanaged relationships. People that were supposed to be in your life, you mismanage. People that are not supposed to be in your life, you've mismanaged by not kicking them to the curb. Dilly. Then he sends the son, and they kill the son. Total mismanagement of trust. 
He mismanaged the vineyard. He mismanaged the relationship. He mismanaged trust. And that's why I put the two together. Stewardship. Heaven monitors every day of your life. Please write this down if you don't get anything else. Heaven monitors every day of your life to see what you do with what's been dealt to you. With what you have in your hand. He said, Moses, what do you have in your hand? 2 Kings 4 verse 7. The prophet said to the widow, what can I do for you and what do you have in your house? She said, I have nothing. But she did have something. Heaven watches to see if you take the little bit you have and do something with it. Look at Mike and Tanya, Pastor Mike and Tanya. They came here with nothing but a vision. And they took the little that they had and they were faithful. And look around tonight, this place is packed out. Because look what God says. When you are faithful over little... Heaven is monitoring and we're looking for you to pass the test because the moment you are faithful over the little that I give you, I will release the floodgates and give you more. So guess what we're doing? I want more, God. I want more, God. I want to be a multimillionaire, a holy millionaire, God. God bless me with a business. God bless me with a wife. God bless me. I want more. I want more. But wait a minute. How are you managing what you have now? Why would I give you more? I want more, God. I want more, God. And you can't even give me 10% of your earnings? Mighty quiet in this Catholic church tonight. So everybody shout management. I think I've done enough there. Have I proven my case? We need to stop asking God to give us stuff because divine increase follows divine order. And every area of your life, you place a demand and pay attention on management and order increase has already been commanded by God to follow it. So you need to, if that were not true, stay with me. If fasting alone made you increase and praying alone made you increase and reading your word alone made you increase, the continent of Africa would be the wealthiest, are you hearing me, with equity because nobody prays more than you, nobody fasts more than you. But can I give you one other thing? I did it the other night. You may not like me after this. God says, I will take from the one that have not and give to the one that has. Has what? Management. Every area, every nation that doesn't have rule of law, that has denied access, that has corruption and the lack of accountability. You sit on diamonds, you sit on oil, you got the wealth, but the lack of management. Nigeria doesn't have a resource problem. Nigeria has a leadership management problem. The resources are in the land, but the people of the land, according to Ecclesiastes 5, 8, and 9, do not experience the wealth of the land because of mismanagement. How does $50 billion wake up in the morning, grow some wings, and fly away out of the national treasury? Same here, all. Can I prove you that Africa does have a problem with resources? Angola alone, your bordering nation, did $50 billion last year in all alone, never, not even counting one diamond. And the amount of money that the UN gave for the entire continent was only $34 million. So Angola did more than what the UN can do. You don't need aid. You need managed trade. You don't need aid. You need managed enterprise. So your generation, you have to be the one that says, we're not gonna drink the Kool-Aid, we're not gonna drink the poison. It is the lack of mismanagement of our forefathers and our four former leaders that have mismanaged the wealth of the land, which is why the nations are in the shape that they're in. So now what we're gonna do, instead of asking God to get us out of this mess, we're gonna say, God, make me a steward, make me a manager, make me accountable, make me integral. Are you hearing me? Next one, quickly, honor. He taught me this one, actually taught me this one first. It is the first commandment with a promise. This one is easily misinterpreted. When David rightfully, seemingly, would have a reason to go after Saul, when Saul was after his life, pay attention to this, please don't miss this. The Bible says in Psalm 105 verse 15, this is where we get the text from. David, now, David must have been some kind of bad. I'm telling you, he was awesome. Stay with me, my man right here is sharp tonight. They're going to find their seat, okay? David gets past all of Saul's bodyguards into the cave of Abdullam, past all the bodyguards, steps over, I don't know what kind of anointing, he gets past everybody. 
And he's right in Saul, and he cuts what we say the hem of Saul's robe. But it was called a tazet. The tazet was the authority of the leader. So when he cut that, he, David knew what he was doing. He cut Saul's, he took Saul's authority from him. He dishonored Saul. Even though Saul was not living right and doing right towards David, God says when it comes to honor, you stay up in the lane of honor and you let me revenge and deal with revenge because revenge is not given to man. Revenge is given to God. Are y'all following me? So when he went up to the mountain and held up the desert and dishonored Saul, then the whole, God began to deal with David. And that's why we get the scripture. Touch not God's anointed and do his prophets no harm. David wept and repented. From that time on, you will never see David trying to defend himself. That's what we get. Let those that put their trust in thee, let them rejoice, let them shout for joy for the Lord thy God, he shall defend you. David learned, I can't do it this way. I must honor the man and let God deal with it. David got it so right that after Saul was dead, David went and looked for Mephibosheth to find somebody in Saul's house that he could honor. So honor is not for the person. Y'all need to get this tonight. Honor is just like forgiveness. Forgiveness is not for the person. I don't care what they've done to you. Forgiveness poisons you. Forgiveness messes up your head. Forgiveness messes up your spirit. Forgiveness causes your life not to go forward. The person who was wrong, they just on the golf course, just whistling, skipping, going about life. You the one sitting up here, not moving forward in life because forgiveness is you drinking the poison and expecting them to die. Forgiveness is for you. So honor. And, and please don't miss this in this generation because we're living in a society worldwide where honor is being demeaned. Even in African culture, this used to be the place of honor. Honor reward catapults your life. Those of you that are, uh, that are of this church, when you honor your leadership, when you honor leadership, period, the first commandment, he says, honor your mother and your father. It doesn't mean you agree with them. Some of you that may have been hurt by mothers and fathers, it doesn't even mean you need to love them. He says, honor them because there's a reward for you. What was the word? That the days may be long upon the land which the Lord thy God has given thee. And Dr. Miles Monroe taught me. He says, if you want to move forward in life, look for opportunities to honor. Look for opportunities to honor. Look, and every time you honor, reward is attached to it. Reward is attached to honor. Reward is attached to honor. So you want increase. You want promotion. You want to move forward in life. Look for an opportunity to honor someone in spiritual leadership, in leadership in your household, in leadership in life, or honor people, period, in life for what you make happen for somebody else. God will turn back around, reward, and honor you. Somebody shout honor. honor. So we slept on this. We can, I wish I had time to give you examples in the secular world where people, wealthy, wealthy people, I could call their names, they honored people, and when they honored certain people, doors just begin to open for them. Wealth and business opportunities begin. So then instead of us spending so much time praying and fasting, booyaka, 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 Maybe we need to look at these principles of management, stewardship, honor. And the last one in my 14 minutes, looking at the clock, accountability. I knew I would only get two amens on that. Maybe I need to back up to honor. Maybe, maybe I better stick with honor. They don't want to. Accountability, the Bible says an isolated man leads himself to his own destruction. The Bible says in the multitude of counsel, there is safety. And there's something that's weaving into the society of time that's causing everybody, I'm doing me. I don't answer to anybody. I'm not accountable to anybody. That person is digging themselves a grave. It's just a matter of time before whatever is going on in their life is gonna catch up with them. Why is accountability so important? When you start getting off the least little bit, and let me share this with women. Women, you just need to give me an offering just for this, even though I'm not even receiving an offering tonight. This is just, you know, FYI. Don't even go and have a, what's a common meal here? At home, we'd say a hamburger. Don't go to, pop. don't even go have pop. 
pop. Don't even, don't even drink a soda. Don't go on a date. Don't go to dinner. Don't go meet his mother. Don't go with any man that you're considering that's not accountable to somebody. It's, I'm telling you. Because when you're in that marriage and you don't see eye to eye, who is it that he has a reverence and a fear of? A daddy, an uncle, a pastor, a big brother. Y'all done turn into Episcopalians now, boy. Because accountability, can I share this with you ladies? Your accountability inspection of his life will tell you his value system. Not what he says. Because whoever has been pouring into his life, that's his value system. Don't you sleep on this. Because at the end of the day, up under domestic authority, the man is the one that God has placed to govern the house. So if there's some things that he does that doesn't line up with the word of God, who can you? Now, we know you can go to God, but who is on planet earth that he reverence and that he fears that you can say to him and say, I'm going to tell your pastor on you. I'm going to tell pastor you said that. If he's not accountable to someone now, and if he's not accountable to anybody on earth, he will never be accountable to God. Women say, thank you, Auntie Pat. So see, you're looking at what kind of car he drives, how much money he got in the bank, what his parents may have, or what kind of car, you know, what kind of clothes he got. Forget that. You focus on the top leadership component, that is accountability. The Bible says, know those that labor amongst you. Know those that walk beside you. Know them. See what their accountability track is like. And so here are three things. If we want to promote, if we want to see our life catapult, instead of trying to promote ourselves, make a deliberate decision tonight. In these particular life principled areas, I'm going to do 2 Corinthians 13, 5, examine myself and see where am I not accountable as much as I should be. If you're married, somebody ought to know where you are. Got mighty quiet on that one. Can I make you laugh on this one? You think you're better than Jesus? Jesus says, I go away to prepare a place for you, and where I am, you shall be also. So when Jesus left, he told somebody where he was going. He didn't just disappear. And he didn't only say, this is where I'm going. He says, and I'm going to come back and take you. Are you hearing me? So you think you're better than Jesus? You should want to be accountable because the more you're accountable, the more you can be trusted, the more you can safeguard yourself. Somebody shout, safeguard yourself. And I'm going to leave some time on the clock tonight, even though it's 10 minutes left. I want to lead you into a confession because I trust that these things if you will take them to heart. And Mike, can you ask the minister to come very softly? I'm just going to lead you into a confession and pray and leave 10 minutes on the clock. What were the principles that everybody sleeps on? Management and stewardship. Let's marry those together. Management and stewardship. I've noticed that in my ministries, and I, we have 14 different arms of business or outreach to the ministry. And the more I manage, the more there's order, the more the infrastructure is tight, the more policies, procedures, and guidelines, and, and the more I manage, God starts opening up more doors, and God starts bringing more increase. And in areas that I haven't managed, I see stagnation and the lack of growth. And the moment I now go give attention to this particular area in that arm and put things in place, immediately I begin to see increase. You don't wait for opportunities to happen. You make opportunities happen. Are you hearing me? Can I say that again? You don't, make, you don't wait for opportunities to happen. You make them happen by putting these principles in place. Management, stewardship, so that you're not waiting on God. God's waiting on you. Next one, honor begin to say, and this was not always easy. And remember the secret that I told you. Honor is not so much for the other person. Honor has your reward attached to it. And especially in this time 
that's easily overlooked in these days, and then accountability. Make sure that you are accountable to somebody. And that somebody can get up in your stuff and can be the iron that sharpens your iron and that can check you and say, wait a minute. I see that since you've been hanging out with this particular person, I see you beginning to decrease in your moral standards. And I see you beginning to compromise on things that you said you would never do. And I see your character and your value system not being what it used to be. And I'm just saying this because the Bible says, open rebuke is better than secret love. You need to have the kind of person to be around people that can speak truth to power. Are you all hearing me? Why are our nations in the continent of Africa like they are? The lack of accountability. Are you hearing me tonight? So I want you to say this. Say this with me with every eye closed. And if you desire and mean it from your heart, this could be the night that your life will catapult and thrust into another arena. Say this, say, Father God, I understand that these three principles are reflective of your character. I need these attributes in my character, in my life. They are holy, they are sovereign, they are precious to you. And I see tonight that heaven has been monitoring my life and taking inventory and keeping records of my management, my stewardship, my honor, and my accountability. I embrace these principles and I take them as the constitution of my life. I will be accountable. I will manage. I will be a good steward. And I will walk in honor and honor others. Father, I thank you that you release these principles in life for me to be the best me that you predestined for me to be. My best is yet to come. Thank you, Father. Give the Lord some crazy praise. something amen good good hey get on your feet really quickly find somebody that you don't know okay find somebody you don't know and I want you to have three minutes of forced fellowship ha huh. okay three minutes of forced fellowship 